His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. See, that devil don't like that, does he? He don't like that, and that's okay. We don't like him. My Jesus saved me just in time. I don't know about you, but I was walking. I was walking on that slippery slope, and I was just about to the edge. This big old hand came down and he grabbed me and he pulled me back and he said, Oh no, Dorothy, you're mine. And I said, Thank you, Lord. I said, Thank you, Lord. Oh, I said, Thank you, Lord. Tell him. And I said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you're mine. Oh, Jesus, you're mine. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy and your love and your grace. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. He's a holy one. He's a mighty one. He's the great I am, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the great morning star, and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Else you die more than enough. And I thank you, Lord, for I walk by faith and I don't walk by sight. Because when you walk by sight, this is what happened, just like the pen I cut off on me. When we walk by sight, things don't happen. That should happen in the spirit, but things happen in the flesh. But when we walk by faith, when we're going to see the manifestations of a real Jesus.
you God for you are the one and only true Jesus Hallelujah. you know sometimes it's good just just get up and take that faith walk throw the enemy off guard tonight you get used to the same old thing and it's just good to get up and just go with something new Boy, as y'all was marching, uh, Pastor, I could really feel, I could feel a rumble in this church. I could feel a rumble up here on the stage. See, the footsteps of the soldiers are mighty in God. And when you're marching and, and you're going around in your footsteps, they have weight. They have value. And they make a difference. And what you've just done is prepared the way of the Lord tonight. Let's just raise our hands. Let's just tell him how much we love him tonight. I love you, Jesus. I love you more than I can even speak. 
There's no words to tell the world how much I love you, Jesus. So, Lord God, let me be your soldier tonight. And let the world see that I love you by my actions, by the things that I do. Let them see you in me tonight, Lord.
his judgments are true, but his mercies are new. And he that hath the spirit inside, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. He says to make ready the pathway and to make straight the highway of the Lord. Not crooked, but straight the highway of the Lord. For behold, he is coming in all of his glory. Behold, he is coming in all of his glory. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord. For I am coming, says the Lord. that door of heaven is standing open. I can feel and I can see the rain of heaven starting to fall. I can feel it just beating upon my face. Lord, let it rain in this place tonight.
gates are open wide and we allow all that's there to come and invade our space we will be changed we will never be the same when we have that encounter with heaven nothing else will ever satisfy you again no food on this earth no drink anything will satisfy you nothing but heaven you right now. We just praise you, Father. We just praise you. We just praise you, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, I be I want to be just like one of these little children over here. Father, as we were worshiping, they were worshiping. And I don't know what I'm going to do the day I stand in your presence. I may just be just like this young man with a little red shirt on, just rolling around on heaven's floor in the presence of Jesus. Yes. See, they were worshiping. 
They were worshiping. I'm going to just take my old tattered garments and just wave them before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because I'm going to have on a new robe. Come on, church. My ankles will be straight. My knees will be strengthened. And yes, I'll wave at Jesus just like you do. I don't step lightly behind the pastor's desk tonight. I don't. I come before you tonight with fear and trembling. I come before you naked, wretched, and blind tonight as we were talking and discussing earlier. I don't know what it is about coming before the Lord and, and, and dispensing His Word before the congregation, but yes, I get nervous, but yes, I feel the anointing. And I'm going to tell you, church, your pastor and first lady, they're the real deal. The associate pastor, Chris, and his first lady, they're the real deal. When you see them in church, and you see them on the street, that's the way you see them every day. And, and, and I thank God for that. I'm going to say this about me and my wife. It's not about our upbringing, but it's about our outbringing. Because Jesus brought us out. And I thank God for that. And I thank God that you could come into an oasis, you could come into a place and get a drink of water that's not stagnant. And I say that freely tonight because when you come in here, there's freedom. There's liberty. You can run the church. You can walk the church. You can wave. You can dance. You could come in with pants. You could come in with shorts. You know, there's not a religious bone in anybody's body here tonight. You're just free. And when Dorothy and I came in here and, 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 and been here for a few weeks now, we thank God for the freedom because when we come in here, we not only just feel the freedom, but we feel the love of Christ on God's yes, people. Yes, amen. A lot of places don't have that. I told Brother Chris last night as we were doing the, the songs last night after service was over, I said there's a whole lot of places they are drier than last year's bird's nest. Yeah. Dry. They need a touch. They need that rain that my wife was singing about. Not only a rain, but they need that Holy Ghost rain. Yes, amen. Not only that, I'm glad we've got the Holy Ghost, but I want to speak something to you tonight. We not only need that rain and that Holy Ghost, but we need the fire. We need that fire. I'm going to start in Exodus. I'm going to start slow here. I'm going to work my way through, and I try not to hold you too long, but I want to get a point across tonight that... If the church needed anything tonight, it needs the fire again. A lot of people say, well, why is this missing? Why, why isn't this pers person sta stepping up? I see a whole lot of people filled with the Holy Ghost, but they don't have the fire. That's right. Come on. I, I grew up in some of that old religious background. They'd get up and testify. I remember my mother testifying, and she had a Pentecostal sandal. Us youth group would always hide in the back and we'd laugh and I'm going to use a Kentucky term, we'd snicker. But my mom would be sitting on the pew beside one of them sisters and she had one of them PhDs, a Pentecostal hairdo. And uh, me and y'all got PhDs too. The women's got the PhDs, it's the Pentecostal hairdo, but the men's got a PhD. Look at, look at their hands, you can tell who's had a hold of a pair of post hole diggers. And I'd get to act up a little bit and I'd hear that finger. And my mom had one of them boomerang Pentecostals. She could throw that shoe toward the pulpit and it would circle around. And it would knock the fire out of me and come right back around and do its Holy Ghost march around the church just like y'all did and land right back on her foot and she looked back at me and smiled. Like she had Jesus in her pocket. But what I've been longing for is what some of us have got. It's that fire again. It wants to show back up in the church. Pastor, Pastor touched on it this morning. Come on, amen. Didn't he preach a good word this morning? Come on. I ate. I had two meals. Come on. You know, 
We'll, we'll get up, we'll eat breakfast, we'll have all kinds of spread and lay out for breakfast and, and lunch and dinner, and then our spirit man will settle for a cold snack every day. And I'm telling you, I long to flip the script, Sister Nina. I want to I want to be able to eat a spiritual meal. When I come to the house of God, you know, just like he was talking about people playing. I don't want to play. I want to come in and get in. I want to dive in. I want to jump in and get a hold of what God has for me. Because I'm looking at Monday, and we may not have church on Monday or Tuesday. And some churches don't have it, but just Sunday morning. And they've got to go all the way through the week, past hump day, Wednesday to next Sunday. And some of them just have it on Sunday morning. I can't do it. I gotta have Jesus. Yes. And we sold out. We get up in the morning. She'll go upstairs. I, I, I told him the other night, and I said, you know what? We got rid of our couch. We gave it away. She wasn't satisfied with it because it weighed a thousand pounds and she likes to see me lift. And we gotta go upstairs to the living room. So we gave it away, and then she bought another one. And then my son moved into his apartment. We had to give him our couch. So what we did was just leave our two wing back chairs, and she put up her keyboard right over there, her rolling keyboard, and I got my little cajon box right next to her. And it, and it may be five o'clock in the morning. We come upstairs because we can't sleep. She turns on that keyboard and I sit on that box and we begin to praise Jesus. See, I don't care what my next door neighbors think. I know we're in an apartment. Maybe it'll go through those walls and start saturating them. We need the fire everywhere we go. In, in, in Exodus chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, in, in verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to summarize some of this. I'm going to give you the Terry version, okay? I'm reading out of the Thompson chain, but I'm going to give you the Terry chain tonight. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came into the mountain of God unto Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. I want to stop right there just real quick. You've read this before. Some of y'all studied this before. And I'm going to share it with you. As he was going along, you've got to understand, they were in a desert area. And I don't want to do no, I'll preach a little bit tonight, but I want to get into the preaching. And you've got to understand, it was hot. You think it's hot out here. I know a place that's hotter than that. Come on, we, we was talking today, me and Pastor talking about doing a five mile walk and we left the restaurant and, and we went 50 feet to the car and we felt like that was five miles. At least I did. Come on, amen. And, and so Moses looked and it was not a rare occurrence for a, something to catch on fire. Now you've got to understand something. God is doing something. If, you, if you'll look at the news right now, what's going on in Hawaii? Come on, Devastation. And I'm going to get to there, but give me just a second. As Moses looked, he was watching, and, and most of the time when things caught on fire, it didn't take him long for them to be consumed. But at one point in his time, he was walking along, minding the flock, making sure everybody was taken care of like a good shepherd's supposed to. And then he looks over, and this thing, this bush is on fire. This, and all of a sudden, as it's on fire, it's not being consumed. You gotta understand, whatever trial, test, trouble, everything you're going through, do not let it consume you. We need to turn around and do a 180 and run to Jesus and let all the cares of heaven consume us. That's the thing. We've let the little bitty small nitpick things begin to consume us and worry us, and we're making mountains out of molehills when we need to look up to who the one who was crucified on that mountain, who, who got the victory over every hill, obstacle, trouble, trial situation in our life, and know that we can receive that fire every day. And he looked and he turns, he said, I will turn aside and I will see. See, God got his attention. What's it going to take for this county for, for God to get their attention? You know what I pray, Pastor Danny? I pray that a spiritual fire ignites on the roof of this building right here. That when people come down 80 here, and I'm not familiar with this territory, but I am familiar with the things of God and what He can do. And He's going to do a new thing. When we think we got Him pinned down, and we can come to church and sing that one song that brings the glory down, we'll come back next week, and then we'll wonder why the glory didn't come down because we sang the same song again. But I'm here to tell you, we did the same worship again. 
But God says, you know what? You're human. I'm going to do something different. And we got to get beside ourselves. And that's what worship does. As you was marching the church, you got outside of yourself and it got God's attention. I began to see people begin to, their lips begin to quiver and the Holy Ghost begin to move on them. When you get, see, worship is you getting outside yourself and getting into the presence of God. And that's when the fire will ignite the church again. That's when the fire will spread and begin to consume us. That is a good fire. Moses turned aside. And you know what? God knows how much of a degree for us to turn for him to get us our attention. He knew that this old street city boy growing up in the projects in Versailles, Kentucky, he knew what it would take for me to turn aside and see the fire one day. I got two children right now I'm praying for, but I'm seeing them turn the bend in the river because there's always a bend in the river. The river's got to start somewhere and it's going to end somewhere. I, I know the beginning from the end because he knows the beginning from the end. He's promising me my household and my children will be saved. They're going to have the fire. Come on. Oh, let me tell you something. Some of y'all's children, can I speak this to you all? Because some of y'all, how many's got unsaved loved ones? How many's got unloved saved ones? Let me tell you this. I praise God that it may be the day that the rapture takes place and I look up and I see my children walking through that gate with smoke coming off of them and the gate closes right behind them but I will know that they made it in and they're on fire for Jesus in the last day. Let me tell you this, I'd rather walk into heaven with that flame burning off of me and feel the air of that gate hitting me in the back knowing I'm going to make it in. Come on, somebody, get some fire today. Look at somebody next to you and say, fire. fire. We need that fire again. We got the Holy Ghost, but they need the fire. fire. Yes. Yes. I remember in Leviticus 9.24, it says this. Our God's offering. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat. Which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces before the Lord. That's in Leviticus. you got to understand something. If you're involved in, in the things of the tabernacle, you're part of that Levite tribe. We've studied it. We've read it about how they would tie the rope around the priest's ankle and he would walk in. Well, pull Junior out. He wasn't good enough. Let's tie somebody else up and bring him in. You know what Jesus did? He took off his crown, took off his royalty, and he come down dressed like a man. He said, Father, I'm going down there and I'm going to walk in that temple. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to knock the doors down. I'm going to rip the veil. That way, Jews and Gentile alike can come into where I'm at and worship with me. And I'll have a whole kingdom of heaven full of your glory. Red, yellow, black, and white. Full of the fire of you, God. They're going to reflect you. You're just a Holy Ghost mirror tonight. You're a reflection of who He is. When you become that reflection, you'll no longer see you. I got up this morning, moseying my way in through, I ran through clothes and I stumbled and I fought with small extra large t-shirts and, and, and got in the bathroom and I looked and I looked in the mirror and I said, I look just like my dad. I said, Lord. But God reminded me of something. I said, God, I said, I look like my dad this morning. It's okay. A man of God sitting in his room would only come out to eat and pray and be accountable to me. And my, he would call us from Georgia and tell us things that only we knew. Who was it? It was God. He was sitting amidst the fire. He was sitting amongst the burning bush. And it was speaking to him. You ever hear a fire talk to you? You build a good fire and it'll talk back. Build a fire and it'll talk back. The, the bigger the fire... Can I say this? Brother Chris, desire creates fire. Not man's desire. God's desire. 
When He desires for you to do something, He'll bring the fire with you. When you desire, desire to do something within yourself, you'll walk out dry. You'll walk out without the fire. You'll walk out without the Holy Ghost. Because when we begin to do things in the flesh, like Pastor said, we're hurting ourselves and everybody around us. Moses turned aside. He got a hold of Moses. He said, you know what? Take the shoes off your feet. Now, he didn't tell Moses, paint your toenails pink. That's all up to you all. Amen. And they look good, too, Sister Nina, the pink. My wife paints it pink. I don't know what's going on with all this pink, but I'm here to tell you that I'm looking for the fire. I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. First Kings 18, 24. We've read it. Here's what Elijah said. And call on the name of your gods. Gods. You got a whole lot of people out there worshiping their gods. Yes. Come on. Money. TV. Yeah. Telephone. Internet. Netflix. Come on. Each other. And I will call on the name of the Lord. I said, I'll call on the name of the Lord. I ain't going to call on Buddha. You can stand in the middle of a restaurant. I promise you this. You can stand in the middle of a restaurant and go, Buddha! And they'll just keep eating. Krishna! They'll just keep eating. But man, you stand up in the middle of a restaurant and say, Jesus, they'll give you your receipt and kick you out the door and thank you for the free meal. Don't come back. What is it? If he's not real, why are you so scared? i tell you why they're so scared. Because when you walk in authority, and you walk in the fire, and you walk in the anointing of God, and the fire follows you, you're going to leave a fire trail that's burning the ground wherever you walk. And you got to understand something. This fire thing, we got to fight fire with fire. There's a whole lot of people that aren't afraid of hellfire until they get there. But let me tell you, the reason why the demons are afraid of heaven's fire, because it burns brighter, it burns stronger, it burns purer, it's real, it's holy, it's holy, it's holy, crying the angels in heaven, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You know why demons don't stay in your church? They're afraid of that fire. When you get behind that pulpit and preach that fire, oh, they begin to shake and tremble. I, I want it to be when I get out of bed every morning, what time I get out of bed and I put my feet on the floor, I want to cause an earthquake in hell. I want to hear those stalactites and stalagmites underneath my feet falling down on demons' heads and they're ripping and running like an earthquake through hell. So, oh my goodness, somebody give him some melatonin. He's up already. Something's going on here. He's bringing the fire and he just may go down the right street and win some of the people I'm after. And only you can win them if you've got the fire. People want to see the fire. They want to see a difference. we got to have the fire to make a difference. You know what separates you from the church down the street? You know what separates you from the church up the street? It's the fire. If I just want to be a casual Christian and be happy and content, I can go to any church that don't have no fire. Look around. I tell people this. You can tell there's people that's preaching the truth in your church. Look at some of your pews. But guess what? There's some people out there that are fire hunters. They're looking for the flame. They're looking for the glory. They're looking for something. They've been here for years and don't even know the garden exists. But they're going to show up. And when they do, they're going to show off because God's going to strip the junk off of them. He's going to sanctify them with a the fire. You're going to see people come in here that are going to run this church, that are going to embarrass you because they can outrun you and you thought you could run good. <laughs> Fire! Yes. We need it! It was funny because I've read other verses and here's what he told, told them. They built an altar. They cut up the bullock. They laid it and all of a sudden they were there and they were chanting, counting their little prayer beads. Don't shoot me. Hmm? 
One of the translations says this. He looked at him and mocked him and said, where's your God? One translation said, well, he's, he, he might be on vacation. Another version says, well, maybe he's turned aside. That's Old Testament for maybe he went to the potty. My God ain't got to go to the potty. He don't need an outhouse. He's got an in-house full of people that need the fire. Come on. How many's ready for him in the house? I said, how many's ready for him in the house? To get ready for the overflow, we got to get out of the undertow. Don't let it tow you down. Unless you get in the right river and let it move you. Get ready. Unlock the doors. Get ready for them to come. But show them the fire when they do come. Don't be embarrassed. Come on. Well, Pastor, Pastor, I'd invite some people that I know to the church, but if they come, I'm going to be embarrassed because I know you're going to get up there and preach a hot sermon and the fire's going to fall. They're going to get scared. They're going to run out the door. They're going to run across. They're going to kick them rocks with their flip-flops and they ain't never going to come back. Honey, there's going to come a day where they're going to kick rocks with flip-flops and beat on that door, but it's going to be shut and it's going to say church closed due to the rapture. Fire. Look at the person next to you and say, Fire. I pray this week you get so drunk in the Holy Ghost. Nina, I pray you get up tomorrow so drunk in the Holy Ghost you roll over and look at your husband and smile at him like y'all was on your anniversary. <laughs> just to, just when you're with Jesus every day, it's your anniversary. Come on, somebody. We gotta fall back in love with God. We get, we get close to that fire and we'll dance around it. There's a popular artist in Versailles, Kentucky by the name of Steve Sawyer. He paints all kinds of Christian artistry. And he's got one particular painting that I really like. And it's this lady who's, who's an Israelite lady, a Jewish lady. And she's adorned in her Israeli clothes. But she's got a tambourine. Reminds me of Miriam. But there's a big fire and she's dancing around it. Shaking her tambourine. When we begin to quit worrying about what people worry about, who we look like, how many teeth we got in our mouth, how much hair on our head, what have we got in our bank account, and we get close enough to Jesus to dance around the fire, and he begins to provide everything with us that we need, plus the fire, plus the fire, you got to understand, when you begin to dance in his presence, you begin to change, that fire will move you, that fire will burn you, and it'll take things from you that you didn't think you had to have, because you don't. It's funny because after they did all their little, went through their emotions, all Elijah did was send them way down to the bottom of the mountain to gather water. More water, more water, more water, more water. Watch this. Bro, Danny hit it. You go out on the street, 99% of them are saved. They're Christians. I've been baptized. Here's what I tell them. I ain't kidding. That's my wife. I'll embarrass you sometimes when we go on the street. And some of you, I won't embarrass. Some of you look at me and say, say something, Jenkins. I tell them, I say, praise God, you're in John's baptism. Let me show you Elijah's baptism. Let me show you Jesus' baptism. John standing down in his water and his cousin come over the hill. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I'm going to baptize him in water because I'm John and I'm stuck in John's baptism. But he is going to baptize you in the... He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and... 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 Woo! Huh? Come on. John knew. John knew. He said, I'm stuck in the water, but Big Daddy's stuck in the fire. John had the fire. Don't think he didn't. Jesus said this about him. There was no greater prophet on earth than John. No greater prophet. John had that fire in him. Mary, pregnant with Jesus, shows up at Elizabeth's house. Mary shows up at Elizabeth. Says, I go greet her. She's my cousin. Shows up. And when she walks across the threshold, she had the fire in her. 
There was Jesus. Then there was Elizabeth. She had John. He was still stuck in the water. You didn't get what I said. Something about that water. But there's really something about that fire. Come on. I'm, I'm trying to tell you about a fire tonight that earth's water can't put out. There's a whole lot of fires that can be put out by water, but there's a fire that's coming that cannot put, water cannot put out. Do you got that fire? Do you got that desire for that fire? All of a sudden the Bible says that as she came across the threshold, she looked and they greeted each other and the baby leaped in her womb. John jumped up, got the fire, went back down in the water. You ever been standing somewhere and the fire hits you? Yeah. Come on. I pray that on I pray that on you this week. I pray you're driving your little sales thing, your list, your praise and worship, Jackie. All of a sudden, you look down and, and your Holy Ghost right foot, and you look up and you're doing about 85 down 80. <laughs> Chris said, here she comes, there she goes. <laughs> Praise and worship music and the fire falls in the car. You know what happens when fire falls in the car after you've been in revival for so long? You drive across the double line. You can't tell me that God don't help you drive dangerously. Me and her come down here. Every week we come down here. Now, I'm not used to those rumble strips in the middle of the road. But you come down 127, there's certain areas there's rumble strips. I'll just ease over like that. Hit that rumble strip just so I can hear her. Hey, honey, you hit a rumble strip. <laughs> She'll be on her phone texting my sister or, 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 or our kids and making sure they're okay. And I'll just touch that rumble strip. Say, hey, boy. That's what she says. Hey, boy. You're not driving right. I'll look over and wink. I say, you want to drive? And she'll say, no. <laughs> Prepare ye the way of the van. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. On the day that Isaiah's family died. He, King Uzziah was his family. Y'all know that. It was a somber time. And Isaiah said this. I was standing on the Lord's day in his house when King Uzziah died. And he said, I looked up and I saw this figure. And he was holy. And his train filled the temple where we were standing and sitting and angels were flying all around this figure crying out holy 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 I see the Lord and his train fill the temple hmm? then all of a sudden Isaiah realized where he was. Something wrong. Brother Danny, as we were sitting across from each other, there was an intimate moment when the Holy Ghost was on you and you were crying today at the dinner table because of souls. That's how Isaiah felt that day because Isaiah knew that there was more of him and less of the Father and he needed to get closer to the Father. But he looked up and said, God, I can't get any closer because I'm a man of unclean lips. Speak it. Remember what you said? Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak those things that aren't as though they already are. I'm getting closer to Jesus. Lord, I'm getting closer to you. Lord, just, just like Smith Wigglesworth. Lord, I, I, I want to see those miracles. I want to stand on the back of the train. I want to, as we go through the towns, and I want to see the glory of the Lord as I just wave. Watch the Holy Ghost knock people over on sidewalks. Knock them down and the fire baptize them. I want to be like a Cletty Keith walking through England. And as Cletty testified when we were there one night, as he was in England walking down the sidewalk, way across the street as the lamps were burning and it was starting to get dark, demons and people were shouting across the street, I know you, Cletty Keith. Why have you come to England to upset us? 
I'll tell you why. Because it's time for somebody to cross the water that's got a mandate. And I'm going to speak this about your pastor. We were in uh, uh, Jeff Chipola's church one night and he came and he preached the word of God to the men. He was calling out the men and we got into a big unit there. And I looked up and I saw the glory on Brother Danny there speaking. And so, there was something about him. And just from that time that he was there to the time that we've come back and united with him here in your church, I'm going to tell you, I said, Lord, there's something different about Brother Danny Roy. I don't know what's going on about him. And I told my wife that. Did I not say that? I said, there's something different about him just in the few months that we've met. And you know what the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me? I'm going to speak it to him tonight. God said he's got a mandate made by me, and it's not a mandate made by him. Fire! He's on a mandate from God. He's going to win some souls, church. And I believe that if you jump in and help him, you can win twice as many with him. The Lord sent an angel down, and an angel took a coal from off the altar of heaven. There's a difference between heaven's coals and earth's coals. You know what he did? He, the, see, the angel knew his mandate because it said he took tongues. It didn't say the angel just went right over and said, Hey, I'm going to just reach down and pick up his fire because that angel knew that fire was holy. And even the angel couldn't touch it. Honey, you know it's holy when angels ain't allowed to touch it. Come on. See, we're walking in areas where angels feel the tread sometimes. I said, you're walking in areas where angels fear the tread because we are made just a little bit lower and a little bit higher in places. But when God says, let them walk this out, I'm going to send an angel of fire with them. So when they do need my fire, he'll touch them and he will empower them. He took that coal in the tongue and he went over for a Chris and touched his lips. Guess what happened to him after that? It changed him and gave him a new mandate. Honey, some of y'all are about to have your mandates changed. Some of you are about to be rerouted. Your GP, your Holy Ghost GPS is about to change your direction. I'm here to tell you the fire of God's about to move on you. It's about to shake you. You're going to see people in this church shout that you never thought would shout. You're going to see people on fire that you never... We're on fire. Woo! I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go over to the New Testament. We know this, Acts chapter 2. This is where we're at today. You're in Acts chapter 2 church. The disciples were sitting with Jesus. It's funny, he. You, you touched it, Pastor, because I told my wife earlier this week, and I come in here and he's preaching to me. I oh, praise God, I get to sit down and just soak in it. I need it. I need fed. I'm not above feeding. I'm a, I'm, I'm a shepherd at times, but I'm a sheep too. Come on. He's my shepherd. I'm his sheep. When it comes from there, man, you know you're getting fed good. I've been to black church and they be preaching, and all of a sudden, you, you know when the preaching gets good? Because they'll eat. And all of a sudden, yeah, uh-huh, come on, mm-hmm. And after a while, you'll hear them, it gets deep, and all of a sudden they'll go, mmm. When you get into church and everybody starts going, mmm, you know they're eating. Come on, you ever done that? Look at the person next to you and go, mmm. Come on. Mom will cook and she can cook. My grandson will come over and say, Mimi, what do you got? And she'll show him, and he'll get that spoon out, and he'll, and he'll look at Mimi and say, mmm. That's real butter. My old Cherokee grandmother used to say this. She'd bring me a plate that had chicken on it and mashed potatoes and corn and gravy and everything, biscuits, and she'd lay it out before me and smack my jaws. She was the biggest influence on my life was my mother's mom. And a little old thing, man, but she was full of the Holy Ghost and fire. She'd get in there and dance around that pot belly stove in her little three-room shack down here in E-Town. And she'd pet me and she'd say, Hey, baby. She said, here, eat this. And my mom get mad at me because she'd fix my plate. There I was, 16 years old, and my grandma just pouring into me. Servant. She was a servant. Had that old apron home full of corn. She'd go outside and feed them chickens. 
Here they come running when they seen Granny on the porch. The chickens, it was time to eat too. She didn't know she was, they was drawing them in so she could cook that chicken for me. <laughs> Hand me that pet me. She said, she said, boy, she said, that come out of something ain't fitting for the dogs to eat. And I'd say, what's that, Granny? She said, fire. Dogs won't eat fire. Demons are dogs, and they don't like your fire. I said, demons are dogs. Why do you think they call them the hounds of hell? Demons are dogs. They don't like your fire. They want you to partake in their fire. You ever notice when people get out and sin, they got to do it together. They can't do it by themselves. But when somebody's... When somebody's on fire for Jesus, it don't matter who's on the left of you or who's on the right. You're deciding you're going to do it by yourself and you don't care if your family's going to follow you. You don't care what they do. If my family shows up on Sunday night at 5 o'clock, either you pull out of the parking lot and come with me to church or I'm going to leave you in the house unlocked. I'm going to church, somebody. I'm going to get some fire. Fire. Woo! We need the fire. How does your kids know you got the fire if you leave it at the church and go home and live on Sunday night like it's Monday? I remember my grandson being that age right there. He'd come upstairs and get in that big old bed with me and he'd lay on my arm. And I'd be praying at night in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden it would fall on me, Brother Danny. And I began to speak in tongues for a long time. And I don't know about you, but if you speak in tongues long enough, it comes into groanings and moanings. Your, your voice changes. Your countenance changes. The bed feels like it's floating in the room. And things begin to swirl and change. And all of a sudden you go to sleep. And before you realize it, you wake up in this morning and you're still speaking in tongues and praising God that's fire I was praying one night and got quiet there for a minute and got back into my English language and I just praising Jesus and praising God and thanking him for everything he's gave me I don't care if I go out to mailbox and bills were stacked that high I just shut the mailbox like Fred Sanford said leave it to the local guys God takes care of it don't think he don't I laid down the bed I began to speak in tongues and pray one night See God, and he was right there on my shoulder. Like that. All of a sudden I got quiet and he reached over, he smacked me. He said, Poppy, Poppy, are you asleep? I said, No, baby, what is it? He said, Are you speaking Spanish or another? I said, No, baby, that's heaven's language. That's the Holy Ghost. I laid back down there. And he snuggled closer to me. And he was already getting warm. I don't know if you hold a baby long enough. Man, they get warm. And he was laying there beside me. And all of a sudden, about five minutes later, he tapped me. He said, Poppy, Poppy, I don't mean to bother you. Wake up. I said, I ain't asleep, baby. What is it? He said, I want that too. See, he sensed the presence of Jesus in the room. It wasn't me. It was Jesus showing up in the house. And he wanted that too. When you come to the right house where you're welcome. And you can sit in the church and rest in Jesus. And the spirit begins to fall. And the fire begins to fall. Those people who really are hungry for the things of God. They'll want that too. Don't be embarrassed any longer. Run through Walmart without your shoes on. Throw your outer garments off. Praise Jesus like David did. Get a hold of the fire like you're bringing the altar back home. I'm here to tell you, it's time to bring the Holy of Holies back into the house of God and let the fire fall. On the day of Pentecost, They were in the upper room. Reminds me of the black church again. The upper room. They were all there gathered. You know what's really going to grow your church? It's happening. When y'all come in, you love each other. You're in one accord. There's no discord. God hates discord. Hey, and God hates an off chord. I was talking about me. 
Yes. Yeah. You, you ever hear some of the musicians? Stay out of my preaching. She's got an ear for it, though. I could be way back in that sound room, in the drum room beating, and she'll say, we'll get down the road, she'll say, honey, you know on that song that Darlene Check plays, along about the third beat, you missed it. I'll just hang my head. I'm going to say, I I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, darling. That was my preacher. Oh, it was good, but you're no musician. They were all in one accord. I don't know how they all got in that little Honda, but they did. When you get into a position to where you cast all your cares off, all your and what concerns you, and what your agenda is, look at him, look at her, and say, "Get out of your agenda." Let's say it. Get out of your agenda. When we get God's agenda, you know how easy your day will be when you step out of bed and say, "What do you want today, Lord?" How me do that? I mean, think about it. When you get out of bed, all of a sudden we think, and, and this is how our, our, our time goes sometimes in the house. We've got three cats, all three of them are boys. She'll look at me and she'll say, well, they're already moving around down there below the bed there. My cat will come, and his name's Jerry Lee because I named him after Jerry Lee the killer because he'll butt me with his head and it's time to go eat. That's his agenda. We get so consumed by the things throughout the day, sweeping the floor, cleaning the house, doing this, doing that, paying bills, going to work, coming home, making sure the kids are fed, that we forget to ask God, what's his agenda today? What if God just shows up in your bedroom and all of a sudden an angel's standing there and you get up out of bed and you come face to face with him and he looks at you and he's going to say this, uh-uh, no cleaning today, honey. Let the dirt fall where it may. Let, let the cats meow, put them on a fast. Just like, just like they did on the ark. Boy, if, if Moses would have put them mosquitoes on a fast, we wouldn't have none on the earth today. I hate them. I had one land on it right there one time, brother. I can see the blood going through. He flew off singing, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. I said... I said, I, don't, I, I was tempted to get in my car and chase him down the road because I was going to try to detour him down here to the Presbyterian and the Catholic Church, make him go in and bite the priest, and maybe some of that blood I had in me would get in that priest because it ain't my blood, it's the blood of Jesus. And maybe that priest would jump up and start shouting, Hallelujah, what's your agenda today, Jesus? Come on. They were sitting there in one accord, and all of a sudden, there was a wind. Do y'all got a train around here? Y'all got a, this is the first town we've been in that we ain't heard a train. I guarantee you, we've been to Louisville, Lexington, Georgia, everywhere we go. We'll stay somewhere, if it's in a hotel or wherever, but downstairs, we'll hear a train. Woo! I know that's spiritual. It has to be spiritual. He's got a Holy Ghost train that's about to run through your town. And it, say this, God's got a Holy Ghost train that's full. It's full of the fire. See, back in the day, if you ever watched them westerns, they'd have to take coal and shove it in that train and build that fire up. Well, God's got angels that are shoveling Holy Ghost fire, and that train's coming down the track, and it's coming through Russell Springs, and it's coming down. That's coming to your town, an area near you, and it's a fire that's stoked, and that fire's stoked. You can't put the fire out, but he wants you to get on that Holy Ghost train and get on board, little children. Get on board. A wind began to blow. And it began to consume them where they were sitting. Isn't that funny? Just like you're sitting tonight, I, I pray a wind blows through that door and it hits this church and it knocks you up on your feet. And all of a sudden you begin to preach and sing and praise in the fire. The Bible said that it was cloven tongues of fire that danced upon him. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Brother Dan, you're going to walk through Walmart, you're going to look at people and say, utter it. 
just throw a prayer on these people. We do that. We walk through Walmart. I want to see people so on fire that they get over in the meat section and lay hands on the beef and it starts moving. Come on. Look up and see, see pig's feet jumping out of the jar and running across the aisle. Honey, if bone can come to bone and tendon to tendon and vein to vein and joint to joint and he's standing in a desert place like Walmart and he's putting all that together, there's some dry bones that are working at Walmart that are shopping at Walmart. He will put them together and cause a fire to fall upon them. I'm not kidding. A couple years ago, we ain't got a Walmart in our town. We had to go to Frankfurt. I'm tell on you. <laughs> I'm, go ahead. <laughs> we were in Walmart. I told her when I die, you bury me in Walmart parking lot. Put my tombstone right up her next to the handicap spot because I know you'll see me once a week when you pull up. Look, kids, there's Poppy. Hey, Dad, I'm going in. They got a sale going on. Sam's got it hitting. We walked in this Walmart, and there was this woman. She was so strung out and hung out and drugged out and beat up and beat down. She walked over, and the first thing she did was look at my wife and say something. Uh-oh, you're in trouble now. I got a little pistol pack and power whip Pentecostal woman right there. We was in service one night. I got tickled at her because last week she had all the nails on her finger. Now she's only got one. We were in revival service. She was playing something fast. I was standing behind the pulpit. All of a sudden I heard something go by me. It sounded like a 22 bullet. Woo! Woo! I looked down on the, I, I guarantee, I looked down on the pulpit and there was this big old middle nail doing a rap spin. Looked like he was listening to rap music, doing a back spin. You know them rappers spin on their back? It was spinning. I turned and looked at her, man. Her hairpins were flying. I said, just leave her alone. She's in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is doing a manicure on her. I'm almost done. That little woman made a mistake coming up the Dorothy and Walmart. She began to slur and slam and, and speak things and stuff. And Dorothy looked at me, and she said, come here. And Dorothy said, can I pray with you? They were standing over by that little clothes rack. You know how Walmart's clothes racks? They she got them all pushed together where they can sell more. Terry, she said she had a headache. Yeah. Well, she said. She began to pray for her. <laughs> oh. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. She fell underneath that clothes rack out under the power and the anointing of God. <laughs> See, I... She gets upset at me because when I'm in Walmart, if I can call her and she still won't answer. So I walk down the aisles, I'll go, what do I do? Psst. Yeah. I'll do that, I'll go, psst, makes her mad. You gotta stir them up every once in a while. So, so I'll see her way over at this aisle and she's over in the home goods or something, I'll go, psst, and she'll go. <laughs> that woman had a headache. She told her, I got a headache. I think she had more than a headache. She began to pray for her with her little anointing on her hands and she hit her and fell out. Under, that woman fell out under the power and began to shake and tremble and the fire of God began to dance off this little drug addict woman. <laughs> I looked over. I grabbed my camera. I thought I was in Japan. I was a tourist. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Pentecostalism woman. Oh, psh, psh, psh. Woo. Oh, oh, yeah. Panoramic. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Kawasaki Yamaha. She kept looking at me going, come here, come here, come here. I was just smiling at her. I'm going, uh-uh, I'm taking pictures of this. This is going in the hell liberal. <laughs> Honey, that woman got up. She looked at Dorothy, and she looked at me, and she said this. She said, hey, what happened? <laughs> Did she not say that? Speak it. What did she say? Oh, they said, honey, you got hit. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! You got hit by heaven. She said, I feel better. She said, my headache's gone. <laughs> my headache's gone. And I didn't use Excedrin. <laughs> Jesus has got a medicine cabinet too, honey. 
Sometimes when you get where he's at and you walk over to his medicine cabinet, don't look for the Excedrin. He's got a bottle of fire in there that the church needs. Open the top on that puppy and throw the fire on some people. They were minding their own business and God showed up. If you mind your own business, then you won't be minding mine. God will show up. If you're in love with Jesus, He'll be in love with you because He was in love with you first. You ever mind your own business and He shows up at the house? I bet you run to Chris, don't you? You don't care what old county He's from then, like East Meadow County down there. I bet you holler, Hey, honey! Come here! Arms around him. Look, look, they're drinking already. You just, you just need to take a drink of that fire sometime, don't you? Huh? Woo, praise the Lord. Woo! Yeah. Hey, stand up. Stand up. Put your hands up. Fire. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. Make her so drunk in the Holy Ghost, he has to pack her out. I'm going to watch. He's shaking his head now. I said, she gets so drunk in the Holy Ghost, he has to pack her out. He looked at me and went. <laughs> That'll be all right. God will take care of her. Just turn out the lights. She'll wake up later. We've had it happen. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Here's what he said. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Why do you want to stay in John's baptism? Get on down the road to the fire. Amen. I'm going to give the church this. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 do not. Everybody say this with me. Don't put out the spirits. Fire. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I let my flesh get in the way and there's been times where God wanted to move and I put my flesh in the way and I killed it. Had a mighty move of God and I know why you got those signs on the door. We've had mighty moves of God and all of a sudden God began to move and the cell phone would ring and kill it. Come on. Have an altar call, we'll get up, we'll move our purses, we'll move this, we'll move that. Pop gum in our mouth and do that. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm telling you when there's a move of God, we need to begin to be a church that's so sensitive to the Spirit, we need to stay still and wait for that Spirit to move because somebody might get saved and fill with a fire. This was the name of our church, Hebrews 12, 29. We went to Mount Washington, Kentucky, killed the church off. I buried it. I put it in the newspaper. This church is having a funeral. We buried the church. We started a brand new work there. We changed the church's name from dead on the Dead Sea. Then we called it Consuming Fire Worship Center. That was the name of our last church, Consuming Fire Worship. Our God is a consuming fire. I've had pastors look at me and say, don't you think the name of that church is kind of Radical. I'd say, you know what? You serve Jesus the way you want to serve your Jesus, but my Jesus is radical. He didn't hang on the cross. He'd come off. Isn't it funny? He'd show up even after he went and transcended to heaven and come back, and he walked through the windows and the doors, and he walked through the walls because he's the door. Wouldn't it be awesome for the Holy Ghost just to walk through one of your posters tonight and come in here and fall fresh upon each and every one of us? That's fire. God don't need a door. He's here. Woo! Psalms 104.4 Who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire sitting over there at one point brother Danny was over on this side and he leaned over there grabbed a drink of water and the power of God began to move and he began to utter some things and say some things that just dropped in my spirit and I said that's right I had to jump up and clap you know why because his feet was on fire 
It wasn't the fire that he had. It was the fire of Jesus burning in him to put it into the church's ear. you got to understand, when he gives a, a powerful word to the church, it should burn in our ears like a spiritual fire. It should go deep down into the crevice past our eardrums, down into our very river and belly, and shake us and move us. I got tickled because pastors, pastors are on fire, pastors on fire. And then you got the associate pastor who's got half the fire. And then you got the youth pastor who'll charge hell if you get him charged up. And he'll charge hell with a dry water pistol. <laughs> I love them youth pastors. I love getting around because some of them are, are real young and they're naive. And you begin to fill them with the things of God and places you've been and preached. And man, they get charged up. Then they go down and beat on the kids. Woo! I want y'all full of the Holy Ghost. I don't care if you are one. Get out of that crib and change your own diaper for Jesus. Like my wife said, we got some gripers that need their diapers. I've been in the church 50 years. Why are you telling me that for? Because you're still one. I'm not throwing that out nobody. I'm talking myself. <laughs> Make way the exit. <laughs> Happy Jack Gideon, a good old man that was in the service and stuff, he could play a tambourine full of the fire. He could play a tambourine, make it sound just like my drums. Just a tambourine. Took it through the war with him. An evangelist for Jesus. I love that man. He was awesome, on fire. All the when you seen him, you just seen Jesus, and, and, like you was talking. When you, there's certain people you see, you know they got God. Albie Wilson, Floyd Jenkins, Harvey Jenkins, Joseph Jenkins, Welsh revivals. That's my lineage. Joseph Jenkins went to the same college as a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards. Research it. And Joseph Jenkins' father and his father before all of them, he started a revival and 100,000 people got saved. Then all of a sudden, his cousin came out of the copper mines who could sing the house down. His name was John. And John and Joseph would go and preach revivals and people would get filled with the fire of God and people would stand up and testify. And as they testify, the fire of God would hit them. Young people, this age, the fire of God would hit them and they'd fall out and shake miraculously under the fire of God and the anointing. Then they came across the water. He was shunned because of Pentecost. And then some of his ancestors came across the water. And I look back and I've got an old grand, great, great grandfather. And his name was Christopher Columbus Jenkins. That was my great, great grandfather who came across the boat carrying the things of God. Was a mighty carpenter. Would build circular steps out of wood. Great carpenter. Man of God going to see his family member one day and it was cold stepped up on the old wooden porch and slipped and this was when houses had beds in the living room and everywhere you would see where there was a bed because people had 10 kids and they slept everywhere and his sister was sick and he was coming to pray for her and he slipped on the porch and his foot went through the screen door and she sat up and she said oh my goodness I see a foot don't I and they started calling him foot Jenkins after that foot the fire Jenkins I say that to tell you this tonight. We need to get the fire in our feet. Because when we begin to take steps and walk for Jesus, we need to burn a trail for the things of God and burn up places that only God will send us and only we can go. I don't know where you go, but some of y'all go different places than each other. When we leave here, we're united tonight. But when you leave here, you go separate ways. Take the fire with you. He maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. In reference to the Holy Spirit, this is what fire represents. I want you to catch this tonight. You ready? Fire will do six things. Fire represents God's presence with His people. How many wants His presence? Fire represents God's protection of His people. Moses coming over. Fire. Even in the Old Testament. Fire represents God's cleansing of his people, Isaiah. Fire represents God's judgment of his people, Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Fire represents God's enablement of his people. Somebody say, enable me, God. Won't he enable you? Won't he make you ready? I remember a man standing, and he looked up at God, and he said, my, 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 my God, I'm a man of st- 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 stammering lips. He said, I'm going to use Aaron as your mouthpiece. And that's where they got the song, my, 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 Sharona. My, 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 woo. If you see the fire fall, you're going to say, my, 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 Savior. Because he did it. Come on, somebody. I'm almost through. Six. Oh, are you ready for this? Fire represents this. God's. He's smiling on you. Look at somebody say he's smiling at you. Fire represents God's gracious activity in the assembly of his people. Isn't that awesome? Isn't it awesome? He wants you to assemble so he can send the fire. Why assemble if you don't want the fire? We need the fire. I desire the fire. I want it every day. I want more fire today than I did yesterday. I want more of Jesus today than I did yesterday. Would you stand with me all over this building? We're about to shut it down. I'm going to ask y'all something. How, how many would be obedient tonight? Raise your hand. Would you please just raise your hand? If you would be obedient just for me just tonight. Okay, sit down. Praise the Lord. She's done got tickled. What's the matter? I had a vision. I walked in this bar. And... As I was walking through the doors, it was a long bar. And there was a big bar standing there. And there was a man. He had long brown hair. And as I got closer to the bar, I could hear him humming. And it didn't sound like any music that you would hear in a bar. And so I walked up. And you know how? I'm just going to throw it out there because I come from a long line of drunks. Now I come from a long line of spiritual drunks. I wasn't proud of it, but I had family members that drank. And some of the bars sometimes got mirrors on the back side of them, and they got all in bottles stacked up there. Some of you, we're not naive. Come on, y'all. We're grown ups here. I'm saying that to get where I'm at. All of a sudden, as I was walking, I was about from here to where that table was, and all of a sudden, he'll, he said, What do you have? But it was within a voice that sounded like water running. As I got to the bar, he turned around and he had prints in his head. And he had scars in his hand. In my dream. And I, as I got closer, I began to shake. I began to smile. I began to chuckle. He said, I know what you need. He held that cup up. How many women we got in here? How many would be obedient, you ladies? Just make me a line right here, just real quick, ladies. Would you quickly? Just quick, just quick, just quick. And I see you. Step aside, her. Come up, come up, come up. Mo- if, if you ladies would, some of you ladies, please come up here. Come on, I ain't gonna hurt you. Guys, how many guys I got? Guys, come here. Step across from the ladies. Some of you. you step from her. Brother Danny, come on up here, you and sister. Step across from Nina. Some of you step across from each other. You guys, come on, come on, come on. Quickly, 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 quickly. I'm about to close. Come on, brother. 
Get down there by Brother Daniel. And Fill in the gap. Fill in the gap down here. There you go. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. It's all right.